Hi everybody, it's Tom again, and I'm here with my friend Kelly. Um, we will be talking about narcissism. Um, if that is a trigger for you, please know that we're not meaning to trigger you. And If it triggers you, then you can click off of the video, so, you know, that people have triggers. Yep, but um, Kelly really wanted to speak about this because she was in a narcissistic um, relationship and she just wants to help anybody that may be in one and may need some help so she wants to give her experiences so other people won't have to go through them that's right correct correct Ching. Or, or as I like to say correct them anyways <laughs> <laughs> anyways so um, I'm just gonna be talking to Kelly about her relationship and what went on and we'll go from there so Let's start the video. All right. So, Kelly, you knew him from high school, right? Yes. Yeah. We're not going to, oh, we're not going to give any names. Nope. No, no names. names. So, it, you're just going to know him as him or he, just yep. so you know. Uh, we met in high school. Well, we met, uh, like, right before I went into ninth grade. He's two years older than me. So, mm -hmm. um, we dated on and off for about four years. And we ended up, uh, I broke up with him because he cheated on me. And then we didn't see each other for a very long time, got back together, um, and thought that it was the greatest thing, the greatest love story ever. And that's kind of when it all started. So how did it start? What what started to happen to make you, make you realize, you know, what were the flags that were happening? Well, at the time, I didn't realize there were flags. I had no idea what red flags were. It never even crossed my mind. Um, never even crossed my mind that somebody that I've known for such a long time would even remotely be that way. Yeah. The first, the earliest, well, <laughs> looking back now, the earliest sign was the cheating. So that was way back. Um, and when he cheated, did he give you an excuse or did he say anything to you? when you confronted him or did you confront him um we did i can't remember exactly how it went i mean i was 17. yeah but um i do remember breaking up with him and i do remember that he kind of rubbed her in my face and made it a joke wow. but back then i really didn't think twice about it i thought it was just yeah you know yeah that's what teenagers do it didn't dawn on me that that was a red flag yeah yeah if it wasn't a red flag it was a red flag in the making for sure yes most definitely so, yeah most definitely. yeah and so then later on you got back together with him mm -hmm. and then what in what between that happening? time I had actually gotten married um, and had two two babies of my own um, he had gotten married and had a child himself and um, I got divorced in 2008 and him and I got back together in 2010. Now, was he paying child support or? To his his child? Um, not when we got back together that I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah. But I do believe that he did. I don't think he was an absentee father yeah. for his son or anything like that. Yeah. But I don't know much about the truth of all that. Yeah. So. So then, so then you guys get back together, and what started the whole narcissism? Well, before, um, looking back now, I didn't think about it before, but um, looking back now, even when we were just seeing each other, dating, and and all that, before he actually moved in with me, there were things that were happening that I didn't think anything of. And I started thinking that, well, maybe it was my fault. Maybe I did something. And I'll give you an example. There was one time where he was supposed to come over for dinner. Um, and then he later on told me that, no, he wasn't going to come over for dinner, which was fine. He said he had to go visit his mother. His mother was sick. Mm -hmm. She lived out of town. So I'm like, oh, okay, we'll tell her I said, you know, I hope she feels better, blah, blah, blah. Well, the next day I see him post photos of things that were done in St. Pete the day he was supposed to. We were not dating at the time. Yeah. Um, and 
<laughs> to be clear on this too, I'm not very proud of this fact, but he was also with another woman at the time. He was like living with another woman oh, okay. at the time. And you, so, you were aware of that at that time? I was, yeah, which okay. I'm not very proud of. Yeah, I'll I mean, just throw that out there, but. We all do things in our past that, you know, that we look back and go, oh, really, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. that you know, yeah. everybody does that. And he was my first love, and I justified it that way, which I know was wrong. Mm -hmm. But um, but anyway, he, I had confronted him with that, and he got mad at me. I thought you were supposed to be a your mom. You know, mm -hmm. but now you're, you're off, whatever. So obviously, I mean, clearly he lied. Yeah. And then what happened was that everything got twisted. He twisted everything to now I'm the bad person because now I'm interrogating him. I have no right to, to interrogate him because we're not dating. Yeah. But if you lie to me, I don't care if you're my friend or my brother or whatever. I'm going to ask you about it. Yep. Why yep. did you lie? You don't need to lie to me at all. Yeah, yeah. And that makes sense. Like, he totally turned it to, well, no, I'm mad at you now, mm -hmm. so you've got to stop. You're, you're being mad, mm -hmm. you know? And that kind of set forth a pattern for our entire relationship. That was, a, that was how it usually ended up happening. Yeah. And then I would confront him with something. He would deny it twist it, get mad at me for even implying this, and then now I'm the bad person. Yeah. And then I would end up apologizing for reacting to something that... Because now you feel like it's your fault, yes. and it's totally not your fault. Right. It has, and, yep. and if you wouldn't be like this, I would never do that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. I totally understand that. Yep. How was he with your friends and your family? In the very beginning, he was very outgoing, and um, at least I thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, but there was a time that my best friend and him got into an argument over something that happened 20 years ago, and I wasn't allowed to speak with her get a hold of her in any way or he would leave. Yeah. Um, why I I let that happen is beyond me at this point, but looking back it was because I didn't want him to leave. Yeah, for sure. So and I kick myself every day for that, but it it's that's But sure. again again it's one of those things where you you think you're doing the right thing. You love this person. You don't want them to leave. You're going to make concessions for them. You know, I should be on his side. Yep. Yeah. You know, I totally understand. Even though I didn't agree with him, but not agreeing with him would have caused what is known in the community as narcissistic rage. Yeah. And basically at that point, you're going to get up. You're going, you're going to, you're going to get it. Yeah. Not physically. Yeah. Um, now there are narcissistic relationships that are also physical, but he was he never touched me. Yeah. So physically, it was not a physically violent relationship. It was yeah. all emotional. Yeah, definitely. Emotional. Definitely. So he basically was pulling you away from your best friends. Mm -hmm. Was he doing that with any of your other friends or your family? Um, not directly, although he did try to triangulate me and my son. He really put a wedge between me and my youngest son a lot. Um, there was a lot of issues there. I knew he didn't like my son. Yeah. But he wouldn't come out and say it directly. Yeah. But my son could do no right at all, ever, no matter how hard he tried. And that had to be hard for you as the mother being in the middle of that. Yeah, of course. You know, definitely. Because I'm seeing my son. My son, I mean, he's not perfect. None of us are. Yeah. But I'm, I'm seeing him like this whole pattern of he can't do anything right. And then him telling my son that um, you just need to man up. You just need to do this. You just need to do that. And yeah, he was right to an extent mm -hmm. yes you need to do chores yes you need to help your mother but he's a kid yeah you also know? 
Also, sometimes it's the way you present it too. Yeah, you know? very much so. So he had no tact. Yeah, yeah. He was very straightforward and black and white. Do it my way or the highway. Definitely. The rules were set. Nobody else knew the rules but him, and they could change at any time depending on his mood. Yeah. So. Wow. So I, I would say both of those things were other red flags. I mean, to tell someone you have to cut someone out of your life that's your best friend, it's almost like, you know, I'd almost cut off my arm before doing that, you know? Exactly. So, um, and it killed me every day yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, and there was months that went by that every day I would try to talk to him about it and be like, hey, look, I'm really missing her. I love her. She's always been my best friend since we were 12 years old. Yeah. Um, but he wouldn't even have it. He wouldn't even discuss it with me. Yeah. You know how I feel about that. And then every day for a year, I got every single day for a year, I got, did you talk to anybody today? Wow. Did you see anybody today? Were wow. you a good girl? Is what I got every day for about a year. Like you were his kid almost. That's crazy. So what was another red flag after that? Or what? Um. Are we getting to the final straw? Is that? No. No, not even not close. Even close. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so sad yeah. because I spent, um, well, we dated for on and off for two years, like between 2008 and when he decided to move in in 2010. Um, there were several times in that period of time that it was on again, off again. Something would be yeah. upset like that incident that I told you about and I confronted him. We didn't talk for like a month or, or so. And then I finally, one day, just all out of the blue, I get, I don't need your interrogation. We are not in a relationship. Wow. That's the text that I got. And stupid me was like, I get it, I understand. Because I wanted to talk to him. Yep, And yep. Um, so within that time, there's several instances that ha that happened. The biggest red flag that I should have known is that he was with somebody. Yeah, yeah. That should have been that should have been number one for me right there, and said, "Nope, sorry." Yep. But because of our history, it in my mind, even though I knew what I was doing was wrong, it justified it to me. Yeah. So it made it not okay, but in my mind, I was like, "I'm gonna get him no matter what because of our history." Yeah. Yeah. Which I know is wrong. Love is blind, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I totally understand that. I mean, I've been with with guys that I've been, like, totally gaga for and just, like, nothing's going to stop me from being with them. And so I took a lot of stuff from them and just probably shouldn't, you know. Yeah. You know? So I totally understand yeah. where you're coming from. So um, what was the final red flag? What What pushed you to your limit as far as the whole relationship like the, the, the divorce and everything mm -hmm. um that was an accumulation of things mm -hmm. and it was more honestly it was more him pushing it than me because i always wanted to work it out mm -hmm. i thought things would be different um but it the accumulation of everything and now that i know what i know and i look back and i'm like i cannot believe i put up with 99% of the stuff that, that happened. Yeah. Um, I would never now. Yeah, yeah. Um, now you know, so yeah. you do better. Yeah. There's so much to learn, and it's so insidious, the whole process. There's a whole cycle that happens, and mm -hmm. I've seen it as I was looking back on it. There's a whole pattern of things how it happened. Yep, yeah. Usually he would get upset for me about something. Isn't that weird when it clicks though? Like when you're reading about it and you're just like, oh my God, that's totally what was happening. Oh, yeah. it, it's the weirdest thing because when I started, what started me on the path of learning about all this stuff was like, I'm like, I cannot figure out for the life of me why this relationship is so difficult. Mm -hmm. I just spent 17 years with a man and was married to him for 17 years. Yep. And that relationship wasn't the greatest relationship. We had our issues, like every relationship does, but it was nothing like this. It yeah. was difficult. And by this time, I had a list that, that I had written out that I just recently threw away 
of all the things he told me that I was. Wow. Selfish, thoughtless, not a good mother, not a good cook, um, um, all these things. And those were never directly said to me, but it was the undertone and read between the lines kind of mm -hmm. undertone there Yeah. Um, that made me, my self-esteem just go yeah. out the window. Everything that I did was wrong. Everything that I said was wrong. Um, we got into fights about the stupidest stuff. Yeah. I sighed. Everybody sighs at times. Yeah. I got in trouble for sighing because it made him feel like he was doing something wrong. Yeah. I got in trouble for not making the correct sounds while we were having sex. Um, it made him feel um, like I was he wasn't doing something right. Yeah. Um, I got in trouble for the soap dispenser nozzle being turned the wrong way. Um, my son got in trouble for making too much noise making potatoes when he made me dinner. Wow. Um, just stuff like that. It was always something. And then you start getting that um, little person on your shoulder telling you, you're bad, you're wrong, you're never going to be able to do any better, you're going to have to stay with them. And yeah. 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 Exactly. The, the inner saboteur is yeah. what I've heard it been called before. Well, people like him, people with narcissists, there's a spectrum of narcissism, but he was on the higher end of the spectrum. And um, I would really, not a diagnosis or anything, but... We it, are not doctors. We're not doctors. We're not doctors. <laughs> we just want to say that, but go ahead. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he would, would have been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. Yes. Borderline sociopath. Wow. Um, because of the things that, everything that culminated to the point of divorce. And once the divorce started, once he knew that I kind of caught on to his shenanigans and I, I figured him out, mm -hmm. that's when everything like ramped up and got worse. Yeah. And very overtly. Like before it was all covert. It was all under the under the covers. It was all like on the down low. And 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 I feel like that's the way they do it because they don't they don't want you to point at them saying, mm -hmm. You're doing this. So they kinda do it under the covers, but mm -hmm. then but he ripped you away from people you love. Yes. So I mean He ripped me away from people that I love. Um, he was not involved with my family at all. Every time I wanted to go see my brother, he never wanted to go see my brother, he never wanted to go see my grandson. Um, he was very not involved with my family at all. He wasn't very involved with his own family, for that matter. Um, he would talk to his son maybe once or twice a year, maybe a little bit more, but not very often. Um, and then be upset because his son never called him. Pushed a, we a wedge in between me and my son to where my son wanted to go live with his father. and. When that was when that was put out into the open, he got mad about that, and then he got mad when my son wanted to move back in, um, and it was all because of the way he felt um, wow. when my son wanted to leave because he wasn't comfortable because basically because he was being emotionally abused um, by him that and he was suicidal too, and wow. my son was yeah. So he, I let him move in with his father. I'm like, you need to go, you need to get out of here because this is this is all ramping up. And it's not healthy for him. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. So I let him go. Well, he got mad. Like, he's betraying me. I don't know why, you know, why he's doing this to me. And, you know, he, and you're going to yeah, hate me because it's because all about it. him. It is. Yeah. Of course it was. But then he got mad when he wanted, when I, he had to move back in with me. So it's like, and then he says, well, while he was gone, we had a good time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because you didn't have anybody taking my attention away from you. Mm -hmm. My son comes first. And unfortunately, I've tried to balance that for eight years. And that's extremely hard. Yep. To, yep. to try to... And then he, <laughs> then he accused me of not being a very good mother. That I never disciplined my son. Wow. Well, if he's, my son plays games. Yeah. The most I had to complain about with him is not doing his homework and not doing his sports. Um, 
that's a pretty typical teenager in my opinion. For sure. Like, it's not that they're getting in trouble, you know. Um, and a lot of the stuff that he did do to get in trouble was things to avoid the bigger picture, to avoid the wrath. Yep. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah, I for mean, sure. There was a time there after the divorce that I had to, uh, me and my son had to, like really rebuild our relationship because it was that it was broken. Yeah, yeah, and I can it see that. Sad. Yeah, I can see that definitely. Yeah, it's so sad though, and it's it's so. I think what bothers me is it's more rampant, rampant, rampant than you think. You know there. There's more people out there that's narcissistic than there are non-narcissistic people. I can't even talk right now, so I don't even know what's going on. Um, but narcissism's just it's all over epidemic. the place. It's yeah. an epidemic. It actually, and I think narcissism, the word narcissism and the word narcissist kind of gets thrown around a lot because everybody has a little bit of narcissism in them. Yeah. If we didn't, we wouldn't have self-love. We wouldn't want to be better. We wouldn't try to strive to be our best selves that we can. Yep. So we have the healthy narcissism, and then you have people like him that are totally on the further end of the spectrum that do things to blatantly hurt people. And I call them emotional vampires. Yep. Because what they do is they just suck you dry of everything that you have. Yep. Your life, your vitality, your integrity your self-esteem, you know, you, your friendships, your family. They just, whatever they can take, they'll take, and then they'll get mad at you because you don't have it in you to give anymore. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's it's disgusting. It really is disgusting. Yeah. So what would you say right now to someone that you knew was in a narcissistic relationship and you wanted to help them get out? That's a hard one because when you're in it, and if you don't want to learn about it, and you're comfortable where you're at, and you think, oh, he loves me, oh, he loves me a lot, you know, or she loves me. Um, when you don't want to learn, and you don't want out, it's hard to teach somebody that. It's yeah. hard to help somebody who doesn't want to be helped. Yeah. But if you're willing to learn, I would suggest do as much research as possible. Yeah. There are several, um, people on YouTube that are wonderful. Angie Atkinson is a wonderful resource. She, honestly, if it wasn't for her and her knowledge and the resources that she provides, I don't think I'd be here today. I owe a lot to her and her information. Wow. Um, so there's several people out there that are in narcissistic relationships, toxic relationships, um, uh, codependent, CPTSD, um, coaches that will teach you about that. So I really suggest getting your education on it, getting it safely because you can't tell these people that that's what you're doing yep. because they will find a way to put an end to it. They yep. don't want you to learn about it. They don't want you to know. Because if you know, they know you're gone. Yes, exactly. And I remember an incident um, that I was I was looking up that information and when we separated he wanted the computer back that he built for me and that he gave to me he wanted it back that was one of his things to give you stuff just to, to take it back yeah um so he wanted the computer back and he's going through the computer and he found a whole bunch of quotes and he texts me so you think i'm a narcissist huh well i think you're the narcissist that's a typical response of a narcissist. It seems really immature though, doesn't yeah. it? You're the narcissist. I'm yeah. not the narcissist. Yeah. You are. Yeah. You know, I don't know what you're, I, I would never, I would never speak so ill of you. I would never say anything bad about you. Yeah. They don't know how to self-reflect at all, and they refuse to. They have the emotional intelligence of a toddler, I should say. Okay, so I'm gonna say a statement, and you, you tell me if it's true or if it's good. Because this is what I would say. If someone is telling you not to see your friends and family anymore, it's because they don't want to share you, first of all. Mm -hmm. But I always feel like people like that will 
go out with their friends and go out with their, you know, other people and usually cheat too um, because they're narcissists. Um, I also would say, you know, if, um, if you're not, if you are feeling sad over and over again, that's not a relationship. That's basically a one-sided relationship and you're basically just working for him to make him happy. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say if, if you do not want to feel that feeling every day, all the time, then it's time for you to pack your bowling bag and get out of there. It's not the relationship for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like, I feel like I don't want to be in a relationship where someone's always put me down because I, I have my inner saboteur and they put me down enough and I just have to tell them, you know, I don't care what you say. I have to deal with it myself, you know, and move on from that and yeah. try to stay as positive as possible. So, you know, but. Well, the thing with that is that a lot of people realize that and they know that and you can say that to somebody, mm -hmm. but when you're in that relationship, it's completely different because you love them. Yeah, um, love is you blind. You hope that they'll change. And there's something called trauma bonding, which, you know, they, they do it so much, and I forget the name of it, but it's when... Um, Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome, yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of like that, that yeah. you, you always think that that person's going to change. You always think that, oh, well, if I just do this, then maybe it'll stop. Or if I just change this about me, maybe it'll stop. And then you'll think... And, and they don't do it. It's not like they walk into the relationship being abusive. Yeah. If that was the case, nobody would be in a relationship with them. They yeah. do it very covertly. They do it very insidiously. They do it under, you know, under the radar where you don't realize what's going on. You don't realize the manipulation and you don't realize the red flags until you're already drawn in. Yeah. And once you're drawn in, that's when they're going to go, I won. Yeah. It's almost. You know, and it's now I'm done. It's almost like they break you down so you feel like you have to be in the situation. You can't mm -hmm. find anyone else. Nobody's going to be better than him. Right. And then and they'll tell you that. Yeah. Right. And Straight then to your face. And then you won't leave, mm -hmm. um, even though you should leave. So then you're feeling like, oh my God, I'm never going to find anybody. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do then? Like, yeah. there's nothing you can do besides go. Okay, well, maybe if I'm better, maybe if I, you know, I'll if try harder for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they won. Like, they, mm -hmm. it's so sad to me, it, you know. It is. And before this relationship, I never gave narcissism a thought. I mm -hmm. never even, I mean, I knew it was a thing, obviously, but I didn't understand it. Yeah. And I didn't know what red flags were. I didn't know manipulation I didn't know that someone could be that evil mm -hmm. I, I had no idea you know I was very naive yeah. back then and I'm and and ex uh, especially somebody that you've known for so long yep. I've known him since I was 14 I fell in love with him when I was 14 years old I'm 47 yeah so that was a long time that I've known him and I never in a million years thought that uh, that he could do that yeah or anybody yeah. can I mean if you really think about it it's very it's evil yeah I mean yeah. you are literally well, sucking the life out of somebody it's completely self-serving and it's completely very. um like hi everything I get everything I'm great and you know what? You can go sleep with the dog blanket. You know, like that's how I feel about it. Like yeah. it's very, I want everything and you're gonna treat me like the king I am, mm -hmm. you know? But on the same thing about that, when you're in the relationship, they're gonna go, oh, you're so wonderful. You're so great. You have such beautiful eyes and, and you, you know, oh, you do that so wonderful. And then, you know, a minute later, they're like, well, you're shit. Mm -hmm. you're just a piece of crap and why do you do that to me why do yeah. you speak like that to me and you're like it's very confusing well I yeah. still to this day have really no idea why yeah my divorce happened I'm not I mean there was a, a, an array of different things that he would complain about he said I couldn't communicate 
Well, I didn't have a problem with my first husband in 17 years. Mm -hmm. I communicated very well with him. So what's the problem? Yeah. And it just, it's, it's crazy to me now. Yeah. Looking back on it, it's crazy. The whole thing. I mean, and that's what it is. It's crazy making. You yeah. Know, you got the gaslighting and the manipulation and the twisting of the words, which is all word salad. Yeah. Um, word salad is when they throw things at you and they bombard you with different facts and you have no way of defending yourself so you're focusing on like the last thing that they said and then they're like you know they keep throwing stuff at you and you're like yeah. and they wear you down to the point where you're like the only thing you're left to do is say okay i'm sorry for whatever it was that i did yeah yeah and, and at this point you still really have no idea what you did but you're just going to say sorry so they'll stop yeah yeah so well it sounds like they would give you a little bit of sugar mm -hmm. and then give it, hit you with something sour. You know, oh, like absolutely. it was all like, I'm going to build her up. So it's not so bad when I am mean to her and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and so I can be like, well, I said those nice things to you. I don't understand. Yeah. So, yeah. wow. There was a incident. I don't know if you're interested, but there was an incident where I found the receipt. Mm -hmm. And I confronted him with this receipt. It was to a sex place <laughs> in this area. <laughs> there, um, Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it was to a sex place. Uh -huh. He had just gotten back from a um, business trip, which, by the way, I found out he was having. He had girls up there too, or over there. But anyway, I re I handed it to him. And I'm like, "What's that?" Completely denied it kind of avoided the whole thing. I don't know. Did you go? Yeah, where'd you and get like, that? Why why are you confronting me with that? Right, exactly. You're making this stuff up. So and I, I finally told him and I finally told I finally said, Well, somebody's lying and it ain't me. Yeah. Yeah. And then um if I would bring it up again, I got the narcissistic rage. Yeah. Why do you keep bringing this up? Why are you bringing up the past? That's the past. Blah blah yeah. blah. And that was that happened three times actually. Yeah, I but I can remember. But I can see this now. Like when you're like somebody's lying and it ain't me. Mm -hmm. You started getting your strength then. Yeah. You started standing up to him, and that's that's what was like pissing that. him off. Yeah, yeah, that's where he went into, like, oh, I'm gonna have to get divorced because she's catching on. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. I mean, I may be completely no, off you're, base. No, you're you're right. Yeah. You're definitely right because the abuse became more um in your face once he realized that i am learning because i started going through therapy and he knew it mm -hmm. um i started talking to him about codependency and he didn't really want he was like well why do you think you're codependent and he knew that i was researching he knew that i was catching on yeah and then I think this, I think I can almost pinpoint the point where he was like, oh shit, she caught, she caught on. Yeah. Is the time that him and I got into a fight, which was nothing new. Um, we got into a fight and I was packing up all my stuff and I told my son, pack up a bag, we're leaving. Wow. And he, I walk back into the bedroom and he's got a loaded gun to his head. Wow. And I said, put the gun down. And I kept repeating it, I said, put the gun down. Put the effing gun down. And he just, why should I? Why should I? You're leaving, so I have nothing else to live for. Now, I talked him down. I really wish, I I really wish that I called the cops at this point. Yeah. Looking back. And maybe bakered him. Yes. But I didn't. Baker is to put him in a mental institution. To baker, yes. Um, because he threatened to kill himself, basically. 72 hour mandatory. Yep. Well, anyway. Um, he kept doing it, kept doing it. Finally, I got him to talk him down. Uh, and one thing you got to know about narcissists, when they get you or they get what they want out of the situation, they have a specific look to them. And it's true across the board. They have a specific look. It's either a glare or a smirk. Yeah. So once he got the gun down, I got it out of his hand. I threw it on the bed. We talked. We did all that. Everything was calm. And... Once everything was calm, he grabbed the gun again, and he looks at me and he goes, next time, make sure that the barrel is empty. 
Oh, wow. With that smirk. And it wow. just floored me wow. at that point. You knew at, at that point. At that point. So after that, I had wrote him a letter, because that's what I do. I love to write. Um, so I wrote him a letter writing out everything. And I explained to him, I said, that incident made me think of you in a completely different way. I sure. said, number one, if that was real, you need help because you're suicidal. Yeah. Number two, it could have been a manipulation tactic. And if that is the case, you still need help. Yeah. Either yeah. way, you need help. That's a problem. And that's when he knew. Wow. Well, and, and when you were talking about codependency, the first thing that started coming to my mind was, this is like, there's so many people who don't even realize they're enabling. Uh -huh. until it finally hits them and they're just like like you you got your legs you got your strength you are like i'm not do this doing this anymore yeah so i i have to applaud you for that you know because it took a lot, a lot of, of people teeth. don't it took a lot of teeth pulling believe me yeah um my friends my closest friends always kelly you need to just you need to cut it off you need to block him you need to do this you need to do that and and they were right yeah. They were right. But because of how I felt about him, I always thought that he would change. Or maybe it was just something that I did. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe if we try again, you know, maybe if we just talk about something yep. like differently, we could do, you know, and there was always that. So once we separated, we started seeing each other here and there, but then we'd end up in a fight and then we would stop seeing each other again. And between this time, I know he had seen several women, I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm a hundred percent certain that he cheated on me the entire time. Yeah. But I just didn't catch him. Which, by the way, he told me in the very beginning when we were seeing each other and he was with that other woman that he says he's too good to be caught. Because wow. I, I talked to him about that. I said, I don't want you to get in trouble, blah, blah, I'm too good to be caught. Wow. That's what he told me. Should have known. That's crazy. But, but yeah, we, we had stopped, you know, on and off throughout this. And then the final straw for right before, was right before the divorce. Mm -hmm. And then, um, we had seen each other that morning for breakfast. Um, and I said, what are you doing for the rest of the day? And I told him I gotta go grocery shopping. He said, oh, I gotta go too, blah, blah. So later on in that day, um, he shows up according to him at the grocery store and asked, started asking me questions about where things are at the grocery store. I said, oh, you're here, because I was there with my son. And I said, oh, okay, and I told him where it was, and I was kind of looking for him, and um, I never saw him. But then he goes, he texts me, he says, boy, your son got fat. Wow. And I'm like, um, excuse me, <laughs> what? And he goes, oh, there you go again, getting all upset. I say one thing about your son, and here you are, getting all upset. And I'm like, I didn't even say anything for one. Yeah. And I, I did say, well, that was rude, or something to that effect. Yeah. And I'm like, first of all, it's my son. Second of all, to say that to anybody is rude. Mm -hmm. And I said, he says, you know what I can't believe is that if it was anybody else other than your son, you would have been right there joking around with me. And I said, uh... Have you met me? <laughs> no. no, I wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm already sensitive about my weight as it is. Why would I make fun of somebody else? Yeah. No, that's not me. And you should know that. And I said, you know what makes me sad is the fact that you can't even look at yourself in the mirror and say that what you just did was rude as hell. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, here you go again. This is all your fault, blah, blah, blah. Who come to find out he wanted to break up with me because he already had another girl on the side. Wow. Yeah. And then that brings us into the, the, the divorce, which sparked a whole array of smear campaigns and um, I find, narcissistic rage. I find it really disgusting. I'm not even going to say the name of this, but that he had a website all about hating you, mm -hmm. which really frustrates, it frustrates the heck out of me because that just shows you how emotionally damaging he was to you. Mm -hmm. I mean... If he's doing that, it, it 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 just blows my mind that someone can do that to you. He put out a, a, a hate website on me. I hate Kelly. Mm -hmm. dot com. Um, there was more to it, but yeah, of um, it's not even there anymore. So you can yeah. even look it up. But 
he had the website out. In the very beginning, he put out pictures of me, boudoir pictures of me that he had taken um, because he was an amateur photographer. Yeah. And they were supposed to be just for him, yeah. basically. And he put them out there. And then he proceeded to call me a blob of flesh. Um, he would make fun of me. He made fun of my weight. Um, he put pictures of him and his girlfriend, his new supply is what I call it, um, out there saying, oh, I found the love of my life and blah, blah, blah. That was just the ideal phase. Yeah. And I'm sure she she thought she won. Yeah. Um, is she but, with them anymore? Um, I think they're still together, but I really don't pay attention. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure they are, and I'm sure she's I'm getting the same, same treatment. Yep. Yeah. Maybe so in a different way. But you just feel sorry for her, you know? Um, yes and no. Yeah. Yes and no, because the way things went, um, I don't feel sorry for her because she knew. Yeah. I had spoke with her. Um, he had done something similar in a smear campaign to her and then continued to go with him. So and she's I don't. Still, wow. Yeah. Wow. So I don't feel sorry for her. I, I actually am thankful mm -hmm. because without she took her, him away from me. Yes. Yeah. Although things ramped up for quite a while after that, for about a year. He was wow. still driving by my house with her on the back of his motorcycle, revving the engine every time he drove by. He was still emailing me. I would have put me. roofing nails out in the street. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't recommend it, but I might have done that. I might have done that. Well, had I been in any kind of frame of mind, I think there was a lot of things that I probably would have done. Yeah. A lot of things that I probably would have done differently. Um, with the website, I called the police. Mm -hmm. I came over. I was clearly distraught about the whole thing. I was very upset. And the police officer that came over looked at the website and he says, well, I don't know what you're worried about. More girls wear less on the beach. That's not the point. So yeah. it's okay for him to go do that? Is to be it smearing like yeah. that? And I said, this isn't, you know. Yeah. And and I he said, what sparked that whole thing? I'm not going to get into the whole story about it, but basically it was this guy that I had became friends with, which happened to be his girlfriend's husband. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other issue and a whole other story there. But we were friends and we were talking. And he got pissed because we were talking. And so that's where he put up the website. Well, I told the police that, and he said, well, stop talking to the guy. <laughs> okay, so basically what you're telling me is that it's okay for you for him to put out these pictures because other girls wear less on the beach. And two, it's not, it's, it's not okay for you to talk to this person because he doesn't want me to. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Thank you for victim shaming. Yeah. Thank you for victim shaming. And he hands me a pamphlet about domestic violence and offers me an opportunity to try to um, file a restraining order. But because nothing was said that threatened me directly, or he wasn't physically violent to me, that he didn't think that the restraining order would go through. Yeah. Which it didn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of treatment that I got at that point for that situation. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't believe that people go have to go through that though, and it just makes me so sad. But I'm glad that you're you're out of it and you're stronger and you're better and you're healthier. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's one of those things too where you think I wouldn't be in the place I am right now if it wasn't for everything that I went through. Yeah. You absolutely. know, and you really got an education from it and you never need to, you never have to see him again, thank God, you know? So, yeah. I don't know. I just think it's great, I, great I, that you got moved on. Thank you. And mm -hmm. I, um, I have to say that I'm very, although I would never want to do it again, <laughs> and yeah. although I am, I would never wish that on anybody, I am grateful for the lesson. Um, it, it has made me stronger. It has made me more self-reflective mm -hmm. um it's it's given me an opportunity to work on myself it's given me an opportunity to re rebuild my relationship with my son um which is wonderful yeah um it, it's done so much more 
to me, but it's still going to take a long time to completely heal from oh, if sure. ever. Sure. Um, there's a, a long time there that there was the depression and anxiety, and then there was the CPTSD. There was triggers. Every time I heard a motorcycle, I yeah. You know, because it it was there. You know, yeah. that's what he did every weekend yeah. for months. Um, and so every time I heard a motorcycle, and even to this day, every once in a while when I hear a motorcycle, I'll kind of, I, I have to look. Mm -hmm. I have to just look. Yeah. And it doesn't freak me out like it did. Like before I would have heart palpitations and I would like be, you know, my son would always say, Mom, it's not him. Just chill. Yeah. It's just a motorcycle. Yeah. And I'm it would still be like I have to look out the window just to make sure yeah um, I mean so I have triggers I, I still have them but they're like maybe 10% of the time versus 99% wow. of the time yeah so well I mean yeah I mean when it's fresh too it's gonna it's gonna be a lot worse than mm -hmm. when it's you know yeah that's just how it is and unfortunately people who go through this deal with this kind of thing not deal with that but deal with the ramifications of it for such a long time and it's it's very emotionally damaging I yeah. mean extremely yeah well and you know other people have that inner saboteur you know talking to them and stuff but your inner sab saboteur because the way they break you down is stronger and mm -hmm. you're just like you know you're right maybe I just can't do it maybe I am not good maybe I you know yes. and that's it it takes forever like I still work with my inner saboteur like saying okay um I understand you feel like I'm ugly or I'm chubby or whatever but guess what I'm gonna press on I'm gonna do what I can to make myself better and mm -hmm. I don't want to hear it you know yeah so that's how you have to that's how you have to kind of be and you have to work every single day to kind of put that little guy at rest yep. and, and you know I still have days where I'm like I don't know I, I just I can't I can't face myself in the mirror sometimes and it's sad because I, although I have realized that who I am I completely lost myself yeah I didn't have any idea who I was for the longest time and now now that I've been away from that situation for um, a, the better part of two, two and a half years, I've learned about myself. I've learned a lot about myself. I'm not a bad person. Yep. And I think I don't think I ever was. Um, but there's still so many things that it it kind of comes back to me in spurts sometimes. It's like, oh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I, I don't. And even making these types of videos talking about narcissism and talking about my experiences with it, it makes me nervous. It yeah. makes me nervous because I, if he sees it, what's going to happen? But that's about this much part of it. And the other part of it is like huge. And that part is telling me who cares? Yep. Who cares yeah. what he thinks? Yeah. Because at this point I really don't. Yeah. I mean, his opinion is, it doesn't mean anything. Anymore. Yeah. I got to say, I, you know, I do morning meditations on Monday and on Fridays. And um, the guy who runs it did, we were doing in the middle of this meditation. And he said, okay, you see yourself, you're coming to a mirror. And the mirror has all this stuff all over it, all these little pieces of paper. And he's like, you start pulling them off seeing yourself for the first time and I'm doing it I, like in my mind I'm doing it and I'm like feel the tears running down my my face because I'm thinking you know this piece of paper says you're stupid this piece of paper says you're fat this piece of paper says you're ugly this piece of paper says you're never gonna amount to anything and it just after that meditation I felt so much better I felt like I cleaned off my mirror and I was ready to face everybody, you know? It just was one of those things. And I told him, I was like, that was probably the best meditation I've ever had because it made me feel better about myself as a yeah. person. And I think we all need that. I think we need more kindness to everybody. 
people telling you, you know, you're pretty, you can do whatever you want to do. Don't let people hold you back. Everybody else sucks. You're great. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no that's not true. That's not true. But you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like, because people tell you your whole life and you build that up and yeah. you carry that on your shoulder. And yeah. it's almost like extra rate, wait until you learn how to get rid of it, you know? So. And sometimes if you're, if you're raised that way, um, you, it, it's hard to look at yourself and be like, hey, I look good today, or hey, I think I'm a great person, I think I'm really funny, and be confident. There's a, there's such a huge difference between being confident and being narcissistic, but a lot of people kind of confuse the two sometimes. Yeah. But I think you can be, I think you can be confident and still have empathy. You can still be confident and still have feelings for other people and stuff like that. So people kind of look down on people that are really confident. Yeah. And it's hard to look at those people as, as somebody that's not 100% confident. And it's hard to look at them and be like, wow, how can you do that? Yeah. How can you love yourself that much when I'm over here like, oh, I'm sad, I'm ugly, I'm getting old, I got wrinkles, and you know, all these different things. And, you know, yeah. you're, you're a great person. Everybody I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a great yeah. person, you know. They have their yeah. own thing. So I mean, I have to say, I've got healthy narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I mean, the the thing I think people don't realize about everybody. Yeah, they this person looks confident. He's going through, you know, doing all the stuff. He looks confident or whatever. He has his he has his inner saboteur too. He has oh, yeah. his flaws. He has something that you know he is you know upset about you know like so it's like you know I see those people and I I I have to celebrate them instead of I have to learn to celebrate them instead of like trying to tear them down because mm -hmm. you know they're they're faking it till they make it you know yeah. and, and everybody's just you know? trying to make it through their life yeah and I do think that there definitely needs to be more positivity in the world yeah. and less people hating each other because of different um, political views or religious views or whatever the case may be and just celebrate that person and being able to have the freedom to have the different opinions and yeah. it kills me when especially what's going on politically now and I don't want to get poli you know, political but yeah. But what's going on and how, how the, the divide in the country is just because of politics. It yeah. just kills me. Families have been torn apart. Um, friends won't be friends anymore just because they don't have the same opinion. And it just floors me that that's actually a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen people cut off their children. Yeah. I've seen children cut off their parents. It's funny because when you were saying gaslighting and then they throw all these things at you mm -hmm. you know and they try to make it so that you can't answer it because you're trying to figure out the answer for the last one and then they throw another one at you and I'm like thinking to myself I've been in political conversations like that and I for me I'm just like well it's obviously obvious we can't talk about this mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna stop talking about this yeah. and and then they'll keep talking and I'll be like nope Nope. Done. Yeah. yeah so. Done. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing you can do, um, and getting back to the whole narcissism thing, which basically you just kind of said it there, the best thing that you can do when you're dealing with a narcissist is to not engage. Yep. Don't. You know what they are looking for is an emotional reaction. Yeah. So if you don't give them that emotional reaction, they'll get bored with you. Yeah. You know. Wow. And um, because you're not funny. It's like the trolls on Facebook. Yeah. And they're waiting for you to engage. And when you engage, they start coming after you. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. And it's sad, but it's true. And unfortunately, when you're in a relationship, especially a romantic relationship with them, and you don't answer them, and you don't give them what they want, it's, I'm going to leave you if you don't do this. And that was a big thing, too, in my relationship. It, it was, if you don't change, I'm going to leave. Wow. I'm leaving if you don't do X, Y, Z. So it was always the threat of him leaving. And he knew I didn't want him to leave. Yeah. So what's the best 
way for me, for him to get control over me, was to threaten to leave. Yeah. Well, when the thing with my friend, that he wasn't, you know, allowing me to see my friend, at that point, um, as many times as I told him I didn't think it was right, I didn't think it was fair, and I don't think, you know, this is, he, he even asked me, you're going to resent me later for this, aren't you? And I'm like, I can't tell you what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, do I resent him for that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Freaking lose. It was a way of control. Oh, yeah. It was completely a way of control. That's the definition of domestic violence is one trying to have power and control over the other. Yep, yeah. So you've worked on yourself, you, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Um, we're friends, so of course she's doing great. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> but so, what's next for Kelly? What are we gonna What are we gonna see coming up for Kelly, especially with her videos? Because she has her videos, Kelly Lee, um, or Kelly's Little bu Bubble, right? It, it's no longer Kelly's Little Bubble, but it's just under Kelly Lee. We'll link the We'll link it though. We'll, we'll link it down below. Yep. <laughs> um, but I'm just, I'm doing the weight loss journey, health and wellness, and I am really trying to work on all of that and heal, which I've been doing a wonderful job at, but not so much the weight loss. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you with that one, girl. I hear you. <laughs> but I'm trying. I'm just trying to build up my YouTube channel. I am um, focusing on that mostly, just working and focusing on family and friends and my YouTube channel, pretty much. That's awesome. Trying to live life and be happy, stay positive. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you. you. Um, so do you feel a little bit better now, like after talking about it? or? I always feel better after I talk about it. And um, I love sharing my experiences with other people. I want to educate and I want to inspire and I want to, if I could just help one person out of that situation, or at least give them some sort of knowledge to be able to better deal with the situation that they're in, then I, you know, I did my job that, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, you know, yeah. it's not completely over because there's still narcissists out there. And I always think we should have a narcissistic website. You know how they have for sex predators? Mm -hmm. We should have one for that. Why can't we set that up? Yeah, I for sure. That. For <laughs> sure. There's probably a narcissistic dating website. Like, if you want a narcissist, here we are. <laughs> I, there should be, because then nobody will go on it. That's the problem. <laughs> I love that you want to inspire people, because I always want to inspire people, too. And I always think, you know, um, I believe that the children are future. If we teach them well and let them leave. Let them leave uh, no, we got to stop. We got to stop. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Anyways, but... Um, yeah, you can almost use that song for anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything that, any situation. I think it's true, though. It's yeah, true. Yeah, it's completely true. Yeah. So, but um, I think we're going to sign off now. You feel good? I do. do you? I feel good. Awesome. I feel good. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, wait. Don't look at my bruise. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get the bruise? Uh, well, something happened last weekend that I don't know I want to share with everybody right now, but maybe I might be doing a vlog on it later, um, but um, right now I'm just not ready for it. So. Alright. Cool? Well, when you're ready to talk, I'm here for you. Yeah, you can, you can, we can do another one of these. Alright. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. I love you, Kelly. I love you, too. <laughs> That's awesome. You smell good. <laughs>